Yo, what's going on guys? Hanging out of here. My name is Dimitri, back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be building another set of arrows. So these arrows are gonna be kind of like my 3D arrows that I might end up transitioning into uh, my hunting arrows. They're gonna be a little bit on the lighter end, lighter than I would um, usually use to hunt with. So in this video, we're gonna be building the uh, Victory RIP Extreme Velocity Arrows. Um, I don't see a lot of people using these. I don't see a lot of reviews on YouTube of these arrows, but um, they do seem like pretty stout and like a pretty solid option. Uh, these arrows are 7.1 grains per inch. So right off the bat, they're extremely, extremely light arrows, especially that's for a 300 spine too. So um, obviously if you have like a 340 or a 400 spine arrow, you're talking significantly less. Uh, but 7.1 grains per inch for a 300 spine arrow is like crazy. So um, that's what I went with for these arrows. Now this is going to be paired with a 75 pound uh, Matthews Phase 4. So as you can see here, they are the uh, Victory RIP XV Extreme Velocity. Um, RIP meaning that these are five millimeter arrows. So I'm taking a little step down away from my four millimeter arrows that I usually run going with the fives um, Just because of how crazy light that these arrows are when I got the box I actually thought that it was empty. So that's what I'm gonna be running with for arrows now I am also going to be running my usual um, I like to run ethics inserts basically because you know, it's, it's veteran owned veteran operated and um, they make really high quality inserts. These are uh, stainless steel inserts, and then I got the uh, aluminum outserts, so like the collars. So um, it'll be a pretty decent combination. Um, I am going to have to cut these uh, because they're like the adjustable um, options. Uh, roughly 110 grains I'm going to add to the front of these. And then with the Knox. And the fletchings that I'm going to be using, which I'm going to be switching over to the AAE uh, Pro Max veins just for this uh, setup. I'm going to see how these Pro Max veins work. They're a little, you know, on the, the small side of a vein, but I'm going to see how they do with a good tune. They should fly pretty well. And then if um, I can't get these to fly well, or if they're not, um, if my broadheads aren't shooting real stable with these, if I do plan to, to hunt with them, I'm going to switch back to the tried and true um, AAE. Uh, max delth vein. So yeah, I will be sticking with AAE for a little bit uh, after all the veins that I've tried They just happen to be the uh, best veins that I have used They um, take a little bit extra work when it comes to you know gluing them to the shaft They need the primer pen, but oh well if they work really well and they fly really well use them uh, So that's what I went with. Um, I'm gonna be trying out the uh, Pro Max veins on this set of arrows and see how it does and just because I'm a freak and I need my whole setup to color match, um, I also got white Knox uh, for these arrows to go along with that from Victory. So um, what I'm gonna do, and uh, what we're gonna do to start off with is we're gonna get one of our old arrows, we're gonna take it, we're gonna put it in our bow uh, that has the proper draw length, everything like that, our fully set up bow. Uh, we're gonna draw it back, and then a buddy of yours is gonna go ahead and take a Sharpie and put a mark on the arrow with a silver sharpie where you want the arrow to end now um, for me i like to keep it basically flush or just a smidge inside of the shelf of the bow uh, closer to my hand than sticking out past the shelf um, and the reason why i do that is because if i have a big old broad head on there at least it's sticking out past the shelf a little bit and i don't have to worry if i'm like kind of sloppy with my grip um, i don't have to worry about losing a finger and um, that's also, you know, it's not sticking way out there that um, the front of the arrow will have, you know, leverage to shift my arrow back and forth in flight. Um, if I have a well-tuned bow, that arrow is going to stay dead straight and continue dead straight. Um, if I have a little wiggle out there, um, that can kind of influence the arrow. Uh, so I try to keep it as close to the shelf as possible. But I don't like to suck it as close to the rest as possible because, you know, then you can have issues with chopping your fingers off with broadheads. So if you measure from the throat of the knock to your mark, it will be consistent no matter what arrows you use, no matter where you bounce back and forth from. Um, because 
you measure from the throat where the arrow sits up against the string and you measure it out to the mark that you made. So once you get that, go ahead, take it, measure it, write that number down. And now we're gonna move on to measuring out and figuring out where we need to cut our new arrows. So that's 28 and three quarter, but mind you, I want that to be my final arrow length. And if I go off of my final arrow length with these inserts that I have, now your situation might be different, but if I go off of my final arrow length, well, that's not good. So as you can see, my insert is gonna add about a, I don't know, three thirty seconds to an eighth of an inch to my final arrow length. And then on top of that, this going over it extends out a little bit. It probably ends somewhere around there. So this is probably gonna add about a half inch to my overall arrow length. So the way that you solve that to get still a final arrow length is you, you measure this, which is gonna be probably around 30 seconds. And then you're gonna measure the distance that this adds to your arrow, the length that this adds to your arrow. And you're gonna take it and subtract it from your carbon and you cut your carbon there. And then when you glue this in and you put that over it, it will be your final arrow length. And then um, you can screw your field point into there and you should have no problems. Now, one thing that you have to note when you're doing it this way is that you have to make sure that um, you go ahead and you mark the arrow. And then like where you have to cut it, you deduct this and make a mark on the arrow of where that deduction is. And then put it in your bow, draw it back if the arrow, if the mark that you made where you have to cut this goes beyond your rest, you can't cut it there, leave it a little bit longer because then this is gonna come and ride up over your rest and it's gonna throw your tune off. So um, don't do it that way. Leave it a little bit longer if this is gonna bump into your rest. Just, just do it. So now that we have that set and done, I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out, all these measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate that and deduct it from the mark that I made from my final arrow length. And I'm gonna go from there. So now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and set the saw up and chop all these up. And I'll probably do it in a little bit of a time-lapse fashion. All right guys, so we have all the arrows cut. Um, now, if you guys have been uh, watching the channel for a while or you've seen a few of our arrow builds, um, you should know this by now. Uh, this is a G5 ASD flip, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and use it and square up our arrows. Now, I'm not gonna do this on a time-lapse because uh, it's just kind of a, a waste of space on the SD card. But um, if you guys have been watching for a while, you know how to do this, you should know how to do this. Um, if not, you can go ahead and check our other videos if you're looking for more of like an in-depth guide. Uh, we do have one and I will link it in the description below. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and square all my arrows up, um, front end, uh, like field point end and knock end. And then we're gonna go ahead and go from there and probably glue our inserts in. So let's go ahead and square all these things up. All right guys, so I went ahead and got all of my arrows squared away on the squaring tool, so I'm not gonna need this anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and dump all the carbon dust out of there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, chamfer the inside edges um, just a little bit on the front and back end of the arrow shaft uh, with this little tool here. This is like a little sanding stone that comes with um, Easton arrows most of the time. Like when you get the Easton hit epoxy kits, they will um, you know, generally uh, come with this thing right here. And what you do is you just go ahead and you go over each end. So this just lets the knock sit completely flat over the ends of the arrow. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them. And then off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my um, stainless inserts to the desired um, length and weight that I want them to because these little things are adjustable as you can see here There's like little grooves. Those are basically the cut marks of where you cut these things off So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because I usually use a uh, Dremel tool for this and it's a little loud and it's starting to get late So I want to go ahead and do this and get it out of the way So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and do that 
I'm gonna chamfer these things and I'll get back to you when it's time to clean them. All right guys, so now on to cleaning. Um, for the knock ends, I don't like to go too, too crazy. I'll just um, take like a dry Q-tip or I'll uh, dip it in some alcohol. I have like a little uh, container of alcohol here. I'll go ahead, just dip it in for I just go like that and then that's it. That's basically all I do. I don't go too, too crazy cleaning the knock in because in all reality, it really doesn't matter. Your knock's going to slide in there. You're not gluing anything. Um, but for the front end here, I go through with a clean Q-tip. And I make sure I get the Q-tip completely seated all the way down in there to the other side of the Q-tip like so and I'll go around make sure that the whole thing's clean and then I'll take a dry q-tip and go in there and if it comes out like that where there's like a little bit of black residue still on there I'll go in with the other side of the clean q-tip with uh, the dry q-tip and I'll go around and make sure that there's nothing on the q-tip just like that and it usually works just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them basically in the same manner. And I'll get back to you when my arrows are clean. So I have been using this five minute uh, clear weld uh, epoxy from JB Weld. It seems to work really well and it's reusable. It's got this little cap that you just twist on and off when you wanna reuse it. So it works for me. Um, in the past, I know in a couple of uh, previous videos, I generally like to use um, that 24-hour Easton hit epoxy. Those things work really well. Generally, the slower the epoxy takes to cure, the more, uh, the stronger it's going to be, the less brittle it's going to be. Usually, that when things cure really fast, they tend to be brittle. All right, guys, so I got my inserts all glued up here. As you can see, that five-minute epoxy was uh, setting up pretty quick on me, so I had to uh, speed up there towards the end and kind of hustle to get these done. But um, if you are gluing your inserts in and they do not have a hole going directly through the center of them all the way down, like if there's not like a through hole, make sure that you leave your knocks out. Um, reason being is that if the knocks are in and that's sealing up this end, and then you go to put epoxy and glue and shove your insert down into this end. There's no way for there's nowhere for the air to go inside of the arrow, and it'll start to push up on your your insert and, and push up. And as they're drying, and uh, if you leave these things overnight and you don't check up on them and you see that, uh, it'll probably stick out a little bit or push your insert out a little bit, and uh, you will not be a happy camper because you have to knock that insert out and try to re-glue it somehow. So make sure that you don't do that. Make sure you take your knocks out uh, when you're gluing in your inserts if they do not have a hole going through the center of them. All right, guys, so we're back. It is the next day, and without being too, too loud, as you can see here, all of the inserts are in, and they are dry. They've had all night to cure. Um, they've had almost 24 hours to cure. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and pop all of my knocks in and then um, I'm going to spine align them so what's pretty cool is that with these victory arrows they actually have like a little um, spine alignment right there so they're all laser spine aligned um, I haven't tested myself but I heard from a few people that they are pretty accurate so I'm just going to go um, and, and take their word for that and I'm going to go ahead and get my knocks all installed and set up for that perfect um, spine alignment. Knocks are in, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my, as I fall off my chair, I'm going to install my outserts. I took all these off so now I'm just going to go ahead and throw them onto my arrows and go ahead and throw my field points on while I'm at it. I'm just going to go through and um, get prepped for fletching. Now uh, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and take some denatured alcohol. Um, this stuff is the clean strip just like your average hobbyist like you can get it at Home Depot and I'll take it on a paper towel 
and I'll go through and wipe the um, ends of all of my arrows. I'll just go ahead, you know, make sure that they're nice and clean. This is the Easy Fletch. This one is the Mini Max. So um, the Mini Max basically gets you a true helical. It's like a crazy helical on there. And this one's a left because I like to shoot left. I don't know if my bow spins the arrows left or what, but I just personally like to shoot left. Um, just because it's basically the most common. So I got left on here and I'm going to be using the AAE uh, Pro Max arrow veins for my first run. I'm gonna see how they fly with these things. I'm gonna see if the arrows like them, if they stabilize well. Um, if I shoot a broadhead with them and they don't stabilize the arrow um, as well as I'd like, I'm gonna be switching over to AAE um, max stealth veins these things are tried and true um, I actually switched back over to AAE I was shooting tack for a while and then I shot um, through all those and then I left them in my case for a little bit and all of my veins ended up curling over so um, I wasn't a fan of that I moved over to boning veins I shot the boning heat veins I shot those for a little bit and um, I started not to like those very much just because they uh, they were pretty loud um, in the uh, helical formation and um, they also had memory um, if I let them sit down for too long they would get a curl and they would just bend and you can't really get it out um, and I found that the only time that these ever curled or uh, did anything like that or deformed is if I got a pass through through like plywood or like hard plastic that is the only time I've ever had these things curl up or deform so um, I went back to these. These things have just been AAE veins in general, especially the Max lineup for me, have been extremely um, well shooting, and I'm probably going to be running these things permanently on all my arrows. Um, these do require you to use the little pen. You use the little pen, you put some glue on here, you go ahead and you get this up, and then you twist it, and it'll close down onto your arrow shaft. Your shafts are glued, you put this little thing over the end of the arrow shaft onto here, it locks it into place, you wait like 20 seconds, you pop it off and you're good to go. So that's what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do all of them off camera, uh, just because it's a little bit of a hassle and I don't think I'd be able to demonstrate it that well on camera anyway, so hopefully that explanation was enough, I'll get back to you when they're all done. Alright guys, so we are on our final arrow here, as you can see I have it locked up in the uh, Mini Max um, Easy Fletch. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take this little cap off and I'll show you the final product. I got all the other arrows um, insert down on the desk. This tool is real easy to use. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to to like really control that movement of the um, of this like plunger coming in and out because sometimes it can be a little stiff um, and it's kind of hard to control when you close it to make sure you close it nice and gentle and evenly and then since there is a little bit of runoff i'll come down and run a q-tip right along the base of the vein just to get all that excess glue off of the base of the vein and arrow shaft that way it just kind of looks a little bit cleaner and now what i like to do is i like to um dab a little bit of glue on the tip and toe of the vein it's called tipping and towing a vein Basically, you just put like a little tiny bit of glue on the front and back, but I like to do that after they dry a little bit. So I'm going to leave these things to dry for about five minutes, and then I'll go ahead and um, tip and tow these things, and then they're ready to go. With that being said, this is going to go ahead and wrap up the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. We're always open to feedback, and we'll try to respond um, to all of our comments. If you guys are interested in a giveaway, make sure you stay tuned. Um, we hit a thousand subs. Thank you guys so much for the support. It's absolutely crazy that we hit a thousand subs. Uh, we did it. Um, if you guys are interested in the giveaway that we had going on for um, our channel, which was the three Hawk Helium 30 inch climbing sticks, and then a bunch of Hang and Hunt products to go along with that to, to trick it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Ciao, guys.